Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Digby Gilmore, and an Executive Director of Institutional Sales at Canaccord Genuity Australia. And it's my pleasure to welcome you all to hear uh, the final day of Diggers and Dealers 2021. So at Canaccord, we consider it a real privilege to be here in person at the conference, promoting West Australian mining companies to Australian and global investors. So thanks very much for joining us and a special shout out to those investors listening in online. It would have been great to have you here, but also thank you to those um, lucky enough to be in the audience here this morning. So let's make a start. Um, our first presenter this morning is Duncan Gibbs, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Gold Road Resources. Prior to joining Gold Road, Duncan was General Manager at Anglo Gold Ashanti's Sunrise Dam and before this, General Manager at Tropicana, a role that started with making an eight million ounce discovery through to constructing and commissioning the plant into commercial production. Since joining Gold Road in joint venture with Goldfields, Duncan has overseen the safe and successful startup of the world-class Gruyere Gold Project, now producing at close to 300,000 ounces per annum. Strong debt-free balance sheet, Gold Road has commenced paying dividends and is allocating capital towards some very promising near and regional exploration targets. So please join me in welcoming Duncan Gibbs. Morning, Dick B, and thank you for your attendance in the audience this morning on this uh, slightly frosty morning, day three in Kalgoorlie. I'll start by giving a short overview of uh, the um, of the company. In, in 2020, uh, we produced an NPAT of 81 million, with a leading all corporate all-in cost of 1,592 dollars per ounce. That's with a strong cash flow margin of 18. Uh, sorry, $817 per ounce. At our latest quarterly, we reported a strong balance sheet of $129 million of cash, having paid our inaugural dividend in April, uh, and at the first of our tax payments from our operations. A quite unique situation for a company so recently into production. We are growing production from, from Gruyere from the feasibility study uh, estimates of 270,000 ounces a year towards a sustainable 350,000 ounces per year over the next three years. Underpinning that is also uh, building uh, reserve growth and we anticipate reporting an increase in our reserve later in this year, as well as ongoing exploration, both looking at the immediate potential at Gruyere, including underground, as well as our large underexplored uh, yeah, um, tenement holding in the Yamana Belt. We're underpinned by strong uh, cash flow and returns, and as I said, we're one of the leading corporate all-in costs and low all-in sustaining costs. And as this chart illustrates, there's quite a significant difference between how companies are reporting their all-in costs and what their total corporate all-in costs uh, represent. In simple terms, our corporate all-in costs include, obviously, the operational expenditure at Gruyere, all of the capital exploration and our corporate overheads. Uh, and there's really very little growth capital sitting in our business, which is probably one of the unique differentiating factors relative to most of our peer group. Of course, we paid our first dividend, as I mentioned, uh, and uh, you can read the details of our dividend policy. And we've really pitched that at a level that we see being able to pay dividends sustainably out of our free cash flow generation into the future. Our three-year outlook that we reported in February this year sees us building uh, annualised gold production to a sustainable 350,000 ounces. The key, two key drivers behind that are an increase in grade as well as a lift in throughput. We're targeting a lift in throughput to about 10 million tonnes per annum against what was the original nameplate design capacity at the feasibility study of 7.5 million tonnes per year. We turn to grade, the head grades increase over the next couple of years. And if I move to this slide, uh, you can start to see why that is. We've started really in the lowest grade part of the ore body in the stage one pit. And we did that because it was the least stripping to get to first ore. And that helped quite significantly uh, during the constru construction and startup phase of the operation with minimising personnel and mining fleet on site. 
So we've now mined out the stage one pit. That was completed in about March this year. We're mining through stage two and currently in some of the lowest grade areas of stage two down the southern end. And we see a progressive lift in the grade of the ore body as we mine into the deeper parts of stage two and into the stage three pit uh, next year. I guess we think of the ore body as being quite homogeneous, which it is, but there are some subtle uh, higher grade plunging shoots illustrated by the two arrows on this slide. So there's a deeper uh, plunging zone on the northern end, the significance of which you'll see when I talk to some of the underground opportunities, as well as the general sh shallow southerly plunging zone that goes through sort of stage three pit and out the bottom of the stage four and five pits, which we start to develop over the next few years. Of course, Gruyere is really in a, in a fairly unique tier of uh, operations. There are really only three kind of five million ounce plus discoveries being made this century. Tropicana, of course, Gruyere, and obviously Hemi is the most recent uh, major discovery. Uh, that, of course, underpins uh, Gruyere being a top 10 producer, uh, both in terms of annual cash flow and annual production, as well as uh, the total resource and reserve inventory. If we look to the longer term future of Gruyere, of course we've quite successfully built the resource base uh, since the feasibility study, uh, so growing that to about 4.5 million ounces currently, and uh, a key underpinning factor of that being uh, growth of the Gruyere resources and reserves, and more recently the inaugural underground resource at Gruyere, as well as discoveries on our own 100% uh, uh, ground holdings the largest of which is Gilmore. Now if I move into the short video that we've got, uh, this just outlines the ore body. And one of the key things really with Gruyere is the relative simplicity of it. So we've got really about two kilometres of mineralisation, uh, which is all mined by one pit. Uh, you can see the pit uh, uh, and resource reporting shells here, uh, all drilled off to indicated or better uh, quality and characterised really by very broad zones of consistent mineralisation. So we really have one single lenticular zone of mineralisation. We're starting to look at that for the underground potential, which is what we reported as a retributable resource earlier in the year. And now we're looking to extend that mineralisation at depth with this deeper drilling to understand really of the long-term potential. As we zoom around in 3D here, uh, you can see the simple mineralisation cloud from all the drill holes. And you can see how we've really just got one coherent zone of mineralisation, a kind of an economic cutoff grade. Um, so really quite a simple ore body to mine. Uh, this, anim this bit here just looks at the pit, uh, the uh, pit position as it was a couple of months ago, and the operational area. So the people who, unfortunately, we had to cancel our site trip, but hopefully you get a sort of sense of what the operation looks like from this little virtual side of things. Of course, but large bulk scale mining. Uh, so we're running 240 tonne dump trucks, sort of 350, 400 tonne class excavators, uh, some of the latest generation Kat Komatsu uh, hybrid uh, diesel electric trucks, which are quite energy efficient and also obviously emissions intensity efficient. Large scale primary crushing, as you can see here. There's really nothing complicated about this circuit, it's just larger scale, so it's a fairly vanilla carbon uh, in leach and gravity circuit as we see flare and flying through here. So last year we did 8.1 million tonnes, as I said, against the nameplate capacity of 7.5. We're looking to step that up. Really with uh, no significant capital investment, it's really just optimising the equipment that we've got. And uh, I guess this, uh, this year, the major project we've probably got going on, which is with APA and will be a, really a PPA contract to supply uh, renewable energy power into the operation. Uh, power plant in this, this slide here, and then uh, just to close out, a little shot of our village, uh, which is really it's a very nice uh, sort of camp and well laid out. So of course quite attractive to personnel, which is obviously pretty important in the current market. So just to zoom in a little bit and talk about some of the deeper drilling. Uh, so the joint venture committed to this program at the beginning of the year. And uh, we've got some of the initial intercepts uh, have come in, as you can see on this slide. So, you know, big broad zones of, you know, 100 odd metres at uh, over a gram. Within that, some high grade core zones. And the issue we're going to need to look at is, is what's the best way to mine that? Do we mine really all of those wide mineralised zones or do we mine, a, mine out the higher grade um, intercepts within that? Uh, we've done enough work to indicate that we think that uh, it, it's viable. If, uh, if we get the continuity of mineralisation and what have you that we expect. I guess based on uh, where we are with draw results, 
and the visual indications that we can see in core, which is quite clearly mineralised. Uh, we keep keeping going with the second phase of mineralisation, which I guess has been modified somewhat from the first uh, slides we put out early in the year, uh, but the program for the remainder of year, the year will be illustrated as illustrated here. So turning into our discovery outside of uh, the uh, immediate Gruyere area, really our strategy is to try and find a second mine. Uh, really, out, we look at Gruyere as a long-term operation where the plant's going to be full with a combination of open pit and, and underground ores, and really the, uh, the big leverage for value for Gold Road is to make a second discovery. So our focus really within the southern part of the Yamana Belt, simple reason for that, we, we regard it as the most prospective area. Uh, so if we zoom into that area, of course, we've got within that area already the Gilmore resource, and we've got a number of other target areas. We drilled Smokebush a few years ago. We think there's potential for a small resource there. Uh, we're, what we're really starting to unlock now is some fairly coherent zones of uh, regolith anomalism that lets us get more focused with our RC and diamond drill follow-up. Uh, if you look at some of the more recent uh, results, uh, this is immediately south of Gilmore. Uh, we think this, this is in an area where we've got more recent access to. So a fairly air, air obvious place to go and look is on, on the immediate southern strike extensions. So we've certainly got air core anomalism in there. Uh, and we believe that we can look at extending that system further south. Uh, we've got Waffler, so it's a three kilometre anomaly. Even in air core results, we're getting uh, quite significant zones. So there's a fairly obvious need to get in and drill that. Uh, but really what we see, the bigger scale potential is this smoke bush shear zone, uh, something like 30 kilometres long and really seems to be the main fundamental uh, piece of architecture that is then driving mineralisation into the splays that are coming off that structure. So Yamana is really quite underexplored and uh, you can see the density of RC and diamond and air core drilling through the area. And most of that has really been quite focused, or certainly the RC and diamond drilling, really quite focused around the known resources at, at, at Gruyere and along the Golden Highway trend, which is also part of the joint venture. We've really got, uh, in the last year, very focused, or the last couple of years, very focused on the southern project area. And you can see the progress that we've, we've made with uh, you know, most of this being air core drilling. And the areas in grey and blue here are still really quite sparsely drilled. So typically those are still on 400 metre space lines. Uh, you know, 100 space holes, and typically geologists would be drilling to at least quite sort of twice the density of that uh, to really understand what's going on. However, what we can see from that results, this is looking at uh, just all of the anomalous air core results basically sitting over a gravity image, and we've really found gravity data that's been collected in the last couple of years very good to unravel the, the bed, bedrock geology and put that together with the drilling data. But we can see really kilometres of extent of uh, anomalous zones in here that we're ready for RC and diamond drilling. And if you look uh, where we've got to with drilling, I mean, this is the, the real start of drilling is when you start to get RC and diamond drill results. It, and, and you really need that phase of work before you start to get significant numbers. So if you look at those uh, comparison of those two slides, we've got a lot of work to do here to really unlock those uh, zones of anomalism and try and find the next tier of uh, deposits down in this southern uh, project area. Of course, along the way, we're finding, you know, smoke bush, good high-grade zones. So we've drilled this one recently. We're still waiting for all the assay results to come through, but certainly the visual indications are very strong. We're fairly clearly uh, visible gold mineralisation. Uh, structural geology here, quite complex, and I guess we've really built out the technical team in the last couple of years. Uh, so we've got a good understanding of what's going on here, which, which helps us uh, better target the mineralisation. I guess lastly, I'll just talk to ESG. And we're working quite closely uh, with Goldfields as well as doing work in our own right. And I'm sure Stuart will talk to uh, what uh, Goldfields is doing across their operations with renewable energy. At Yamana, I guess, quite a unique situation. We've got a large exploration uh, facility because we're in such a remote area. Uh, but that's now about 90% powered off uh, a solar array. And uh, obviously that helps us cut the cost of diesel. But some of the other benefits we've really found out is that's actually just the stability and quality of power. And if you've ever worked in large regional exploration camps, you'll realise that that could be quite frustrating for your geos to lose their data every time the power drops out. So some quite good social benefits as well as the, uh, the cost benefits. At Gruyere, in the process of constructing, as with APA, a 13 megawatt uh, solar array, 
and, and this really stacks up just as a business investment as well as obviously the renewable energy uh, benefits and the reduction in emissions that you get from from a uh, facility of this nature and I'm quite convinced that we're going to see uh, an increase in in uh, these kind of projects across the industry really just purely on economic grounds at least for you know generation during uh, you know daylight hours when when you're obviously getting power out of the uh, out of the uh, renewables okay so if I can just uh, wrap up obviously we've got a very strong business long mine life strong margins really think plenty of opportunity for growth both at uh, the immediate environment around Gruyere as well as uh, throughout our extensive land package at Yamana. Thank you. Thanks very much, Duncan. <clears throat> I'll just start. Are there any questions in the audience for Duncan? OK. Um, so we've got one here on behalf of Canna Audience Day Sales Desk. So there's a lot of lab labour cost pressures and concerns in the industry at present, Duncan. So what are some of the initiatives you guys have in place to manage this? Yeah, I, I think that's that's true. I, I guess, uh, I mean, Gruyere is obviously managed by Goldfields, and Goldfields have uh, been fairly proactive there, and they've done some things like put in some site allowance, and they're working quite strongly at looking at the cultural kind of things and, uh, you know, what uh, encourages people to stay within the operation. Uh, so I think that that's pretty well managed. Uh, you know, obviously managing the contractors' labour for workforce is a key part of that, but as the owner and operator of a site, you very much create the environment that people either like or not. Uh, you know, within Gold Road, uh, we've actually been very successful in the last two years in attracting some really high calibre geologists, so, uh, you know, I'm very impressed with the, the calibre of the team we've got now. And, uh, you know, we've used some things like incentive shares and things like that to, to attract people in, but but nothing really beyond uh, you know, what a lot of the other the rest of the industry is, is doing. Okay, that's great. Um, another question um, from our analyst, Tim McCormack. So, grade in the quarter was 10% lower than the prior quarter. Um, just wondering what your grade profile will be over the coming, call it 12 to 18 months. Yeah, so hopefully that, uh, you know, a couple of slides there illustrate. So, so we really see the grade firstly stepping up over the next two years, um, as illustrated in that slide deck. And, and we are in a lower grade patch, basically, down the southern end of the, um, the stage one pit. So certainly anticipate being sort of plus one gram through the remainder of this year and, and really rising over, over the next couple of years, where it gets up to around about the 1.3 uh, kind of mark. Okay, is there anyone in the audience that has a question for Duncan? Otherwise, I'll, I'll keep going. Okay, um, you're drilling underneath Gruyere at present, and it, it is early days, but do you see this extending mine life? Yeah, look, I, we really see that's the primary purpose of it. Um, obviously, with, uh, with where we are with reserves and putting out reserve in the second half of the year, we anticipate that will really add another couple of years in the open pit life. Uh, I guess there's potential to do further cutbacks beyond that, but uh, uh, probably the more likely scenario is Gruyere or transitions into an underground operation. And I guess we're primarily looking at that as uh, as mine life extension. But there's obviously a lot of work to do. You know, we're very core space drilling at the moment. It really is trying to understand what the uh, the size of the prize might be, and then uh, really looking at uh, worrying about the best way to develop and make money out of it. Yep, sure. Okay, and one final question. So, regional exploration seems to be focusing more on the southern part of the Yamana belt. I'm just wondering if there's a reason for this. Yeah, we, we really see that's the most prospective area based on the fundamental geology and the complexity and all the right rocks and structures without getting into too much geological detail. Uh, you know, north of uh, the Galton Highway trend, so on the major Yamana shear on the uh, on the western side of our land package. There's certainly potential north of that Golden Highway area, uh, and there's some fairly sparse drilled areas and some quite reasonable targets. Uh, probably my sense is if we find things there, they're more likely to be feed into Gruyere rather than an opportunity to create a standalone operation. Uh, I guess we've done a reasonable amount of work immediately south of, uh, 
of, uh, of Gruyere outside the mining lease. And, you know, there's some, there's some zones there, but nothing looks special today. North of, north of Gruyere, we're really getting into quite high metamorphic grade rocks, so in simple terms, hot, dry, not very good for gold. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, heritage sites up through the area, so uh, we're also quite cognizant of working with the Yilka people and protecting uh, their heritage values. And, uh, and so that, that area, from both a geological point of view as well as a heritage point of view, uh, you know, we really don't see as a priority for us. Okay, well, thank you very much. Please join me in thanking Duncan Gibbs.